everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we are going to play with speckles on roving in two different ways. One hand painted on a countertop and then steamed and then the other done low immersion. I am really excited to play with this. Our sponsor for the video today is Carolyn D and I am really excited to dye 100 grams of fiber for you. If you would like to learn more about how you as a fan can sponsor an episode of Dye Pot Weekly where I will create a colorway with you in mind, design a video and give you shout outs, uh, you can find a link to the listing in my Etsy shop in both the video description and iCard. I have pre-soaked all the roving together, um, 200 grams for around 45 minutes or so, and I'm now going to add one, two, three tablespoons of white vinegar. I could have added the vinegar earlier on, but I wasn't entirely sure how I was gonna go about this yet. Um, and then I decided that I do wanna soak it all in with the vinegar together because I want to have, I mean, there's gonna be lots of differing variables, but I wanna have as many variables as I can sort of together or controlled, I guess. Um, but I'm gonna let this sit another 10 or 15 minutes or so and then we'll get ready to do some dyeing. For the colors today we are gonna play with a combination of Jacquard Periwinkle and Jacquard Gunmetal. Periwinkle is a fun color because it is a mixture of blue and reddish uh, pigments already so we will see breaking and multiple colors from those speckles. I don't remember if we'll see one color or maybe multiple with the gunmetal, but we'll see once we start speckling onto our roving. Since we are dealing with some dry dye powder, I am wearing my respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves. In each of these cups, I have uh, two teaspoons of some citric acid powder. And I'm gonna go in and take a non-measured amount, so like a good little plop <laughs> of each of the colors. I don't know if it's maybe around like a quarter, maybe less than a quarter teaspoon. I'm not entirely sure, but it should be plenty of dye for all of the roving. And then I am going to stir it up. So that way we can sort of coat the citric acid crystals with the pigment. This will help disperse the dye onto our roving in a way that would be harder for us to do uh, with just a straight powder where we would get bigger splotches. But today I want to see more about speckles and how much the speckles will spread in the roving, how soft and pastel or contrast we will see in the fiber. One other thing I'm not gonna be able to control for is the difference in the amount of dye that I add to each of the skeins. But so I'm just taking the color and sprinkling it on and waiting. Uh, at first it looks like almost nothing. Uh, but then I start to see it dissolve a little bit, and so I'm starting to see some pigment. Uh, it might not look like much to you guys, though. Let's go in here. You could use some kind of salt or pepper shaker, if you'd like, uh, to distribute the color. but I'm looking at it and I don't see a ton of color right off the bat. I did squeeze out a lot of the water, but I try to leave some in because we will obviously need some for these colors to sink in. And they are starting to sink in. You just gotta be patient and wait a minute because uh, it just takes some time for it to bind. I'm trying to overlap some of this color. 
some of the color is definitely not hitting our roving. It's sort of going on to the surface a bit. And this is definitely not going to penetrate the center of the fiber very much at all. I'm probably going to want to go in heavier at some point, but let me go wash my hands and then I can come in and show you what's happening. So this is a technique that I love to do on yarn, but the roving just isn't really doing as nice a job. So in some places, I can sort of see it is sinking in more, and so we're getting really, really pale splotches. This is actually reminiscent to when I tried using drops of food coloring to speckle on some roving ages and ages ago. Then over at the periwinkle, you can see the multiple colors in there, uh, which looks cool, but again, I think it's getting really, really subtle. This might not be my favorite on roving, but that's one reason why I thought that we would try this in two different ways. I'm not gonna give up on this one, but let's take a break and go do some low immersion. Okay, here we have our second batch of roving, which I am going to lay out in the pan. I am planning on flipping all of the fiber at some point, which I think will be interesting. <laughs> uh, but you know, we will see, okay. And I do want to add in a bit of water. Going back to our pre-soak. One, two. Okay, that's three cups of water from that pre-soak. So there is vinegar in there. And this should be enough uh, to have some water on the bottom but I'm gonna start heating it up so we can then speckle. I just added a fourth cup of water and we're on medium heat. And let's start speckling. So here things are a bit more wet, which means that we should start seeing things happen a bit sooner. Now, I am expecting our speckles will spread out um, to some extent, and that is because this is not superwash. So if I was playing around with superwash roving, we might see uh, sharper, more defined speckles, even with the citric acid. And you can see that those are going in and then spreading. Let me zoom in. Okay, here is a region, and I'm gonna go in and speckle, and you can see that those speckles are sharp, but then very sort of quickly, the color is sinking in to the yarn, or to the roving, I mean. That's not to say that what's happening here isn't beautiful, because it is. Uh, there, I'm just going a bit heavier than I thought, because we are getting some really cool, sort of speckled, streaked, parts depending on how this is hitting the fiber. And we've gone all over with the gunmetal. And now I'm coming in with the periwinkle. And the other one I sort of did half and half, but here I was curious, so I sort of just went all over with one. This is really sort of tripping me out a little bit because uh, in doing this, I'm used to seeing the little speckles pop up a little bit faster than what is happening here. But I do like, and let me even turn down the brightness a bit. I do like the splotched, almost confetti feel that we're getting on this. Oop that we are definitely steamy and the colors are starting to stick to my fingers a little bit. 
So I'm adding a little bit more and I'm going to now reduce the heat. Uh, and let's let this sit for uh, 10 minutes and then we'll come back. Plans evolve. Plans evolve. I like what is happening here. And in fact, I'm going to do like another sort of layer of speckles because I know how pastel this will sort of evolve into over time. So I'm just doing another layer before we go and try to flip it. Now, is this going to still feel speckled or is it going to feel like a pale wash of color? That I can't tell you. I can say that I like what is happening here significantly more than what is happening uh, on the other side. What happens if I just go a, like heavier? See, I don't have a ton of control over where I get those cool sort of like, like fireworks of color. So, all right, we are going to leave this another 10 minutes and go back to our other friend. Okay, countertop, just because I don't like you as much right now doesn't mean you don't have any value. You still have value to me. Let's go heavier. I'm just sort of going for it, adding a lot of powder. We are going to then flip it over. I'm not going to really wait and add some to the other side so that way we can start like steam setting it. I do have some hope that it'll come out looking cool. It's just that the stuff isn't really absorbing into the fiber. So maybe I did just need to go a bit heavier. And now I am sort of rinsing off my fingers in some water. And we are going to flip. Uh, how am I going to do this? We're just going to sort of flip like this. There we go. Dry off my hands and add some sort of heavy color. And heavy is in air quotes, but we're going to add color to the other side. Because one thing I should also keep in mind is that in doing this, things seem smaller until you steam set it. And then you sometimes see some magic. But I am just going heavier than what I did last time. I suppose I haven't quite done this on Wool of the Andes yet. I've done this on Stroll, another Superwash yarns. Maybe I should have done this on Stroll Roving. So if you've done some speckling on Roving before, let me know what did work and didn't work for you. I'm excited to hear and terrified to try to flip what I've got going on in the pan. But, all right, I am going to call it on this one. Um, I know that this is not a tiny amount of color that I've added on here. And we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. So you can see some of that color in there. Oh goodness. Okay, we are gonna wrap this up. And I, ooh, that actually looks kind of cool. And I'm gonna go ahead and steam set this for uh, 30 minutes. The fiber in the steamer basket. And once it heats up and gets nice and steamy, I'll set the timer for 30 minutes. Our time isn't quite up yet, up yet. But I really like what's happening here. I really, really do. It makes me think of a funfetti cake, to be honest. I do see a hint of like yellow or green over there. 
Um, the 10 minutes aren't quite up, but I do want to add a little more liquid. I know that this is cool coming in. I just don't want anything to burn. So that's just a cup of that pre-soak with vinegar in it uh, around the edges to just make sure things stay wet. I want to flip this. Yeah, and I'm not sure the best way to do it. I guess inch by inch, row by row, sort of. Try not to agitate things too much too much. It's definitely getting like twisted with me doing it like this, but I think there isn't entirely a better way for me to go about it. Mm. The pigmentation on the wrong side is not, or wrong side, on the river side is not bad actually. I'm not mad at it. Okay, I'm going to go get masked up. We're going to add color to this side as well. Oh. I like want to sing to myself, but I also should be careful if I'm going to hum anything that is copyrighted. <laughs> uh, I think I'm finding myself going, he well, going significantly heavier now than I did before. I don't know. Actually, it could also be that some, a little bit of moisture was introduced into the roving, which could lead to there being some larger clumps of color. And there's definitely going to be white patches left. And I'm really curious to see, take a peek inside of the fiber itself uh, to see. Because I am curious to see like how surface level versus like going through this is. I think it's going to go sink in a bit more than what I had initially expected. So I also can't decide if I just used way less dye powder than I might otherwise have used. Um, And so that also could be a contributing factor. But anyway, I really like what's happening and I don't want to take it too far. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let this sit for about 10 minutes. And I have something else up my sleeve. Okay, I have to convince myself of something. Here's a skein of Knit Picks Hawthorne Fingering Weight Yarn. It is 80% Superwash Fine Highland Wool. 20% polyamide, uh, and it speckles beautifully. I am just adding some of this color on right now just to see what I see. I didn't really pre-soak it, but I pre-wet it in that same water that I used with the rest of the fiber. So one thing that is possible is that these colors that I picked, uh, I have them nice and dilute on the fiber because it isn't really sinking in very fast onto the hawthorn either. So I suppose that that's a good thing. Oh no, but I see my speckles coming in now. Yeah. And a little bit of the colors through. And I'll flip and add more color on it shortly. I just wanted to give this a moment so that way we could take a look at some superwash yarn. Not to mention, we gotta leave no dye behind. So as these colors are settling in, we can see discrete little specks of the powder. Uh, it looks like the gunmetal is sinking through a little bit slower, but you still can see those speckles. There's plenty of pigment in there. I think just the colors 
uh, spread more through the unspun fiber, which make them look less pigmented overall. In an effort to leave no dye behind, I speckled the rest of that powder we created onto the skein of Hawthorne, moving it around as needed. I had not put any plastic wrap on the surface, but that's okay. I was just going to put it directly in the steamer basket to steam set once I was done. Um, and of course, once the other roving was out of the steamer basket. But then I went ahead and steamed this yarn for 30 minutes. After about 10 minutes, I wanted to add a lot more water. So I slowly, and I'm not even going to count at this point, I'm just adding some water all over because I want color that might be sitting on the surface that hasn't dissolved yet to dissolve and to strike and hit our fiber. Um, and so we're now going from low immersion to full immersion and I am going to heat this for another 15 minutes trying to again stay low a boil just so that way we know that our color has set. And you know we can see some pockets where there might be some color that's sort of hit, not on the fiber itself, and this will allow some of that to dissolve and strike the fiber. I wanted to wash the hand-painted one first, and this actually looks really, really cool. I could have just stuck this directly into the steamer basket, but I wanted to you to wrap it up just to keep it safe, especially since I knew I was going to need the steamer basket again after our leave no dye behind skein. And this is actually really pretty. There is a huge difference though, I think, between uh, the side, oof. well actually the difference might be between the different colors of speckles that we used, but there is a difference between the, the colors that were on the bottom and those on the top. First look, I'm not seeing any bleeding. I'm going to add a tiny bit, and that's a little much. So what I'm going to do is sort of rub my hands together, rub some of that soap over, and the rest off. Um, I'm going to rinse the soap out. This showing that the color is in our yarn, or in our fiber, sorry. And then I'm going to carefully put this through the spin dryer and hang it up to dry. Next up is the low immersion roving. And I'm not sure if you can see on camera, but there are definitely some itty bitty little speckles in there that really, really excite me. I love how this turned out. I'm surprised how happy I was with the first one though too. I was expecting to be a lot more underwhelmed. This has some more color overall, which I think brings some fun into it. But it's possible that I made an error with the colors that I chose, and I'll talk about that more in a moment. But I'm gonna go ahead and wash this just like I did the first one, put it through the spin dryer, and hang it up to dry. Last but not least, here is our yarn, which with its speckled goodness. Um, yeah, but I think that you can see that the colors on here are fairly soft overall. Um, there was some blending, but these aren't like dark black speckles or something. So I think that the palette is a little more muted. And maybe if I say went for something like Dharma True Black and tried speckling with that, things may have had more of a punch. Um, but either way, I think it's beautiful fiber and beautiful yarn. I am going to go wash this uh, like I did with the rest, hang it up to dry, and then we'll be back to look at the finished dry fiber and have some conclusions. The finished roving looks incredibly cloud-like. Here we have the Hawthorne yarn that we did at the end. This is our countertop roving, and this was our low immersion roving. And right away, I think you can see one big difference between the two. Or actually, maybe it's hard because the colors are so pastel. But right away, I see a difference. The tabletop yarn, or the tabletop roving actually has more sharper speckles. And things are more spread out on the low immersion roving. 
I'm trying to look and find those little micro specks that we saw when I removed it from the pan, but I think that it's possible that just from the fiber like moving a little bit that we lost those speckles and they've sort of already blended out. There's no question that the colors sank deeper here in the low immersion roving. Uh, we have color even in our paler sections that just penetrates all the way through. And so when we get a pastel yarn out of this, I think that this pale cloud-like blue color will remain fairly consistent. And then those pinks and brighter pops of blue will sort of blend into it. On the countertop roving, the colors feel a little more pigmented right away. But if I open it up, you can see that those colors are very much just on the surface. Uh, there are some areas with some more pigmentation, but again, if you spread it out, you see we've got white behind. And I think that's really because with less liquid, we got less spread and penetration of the color, which is why things look sharper and more pigmented right now. However, then when you go and spin this roving, the colors will blend and you'll have something that might feel very similar with both of them in the end, but it just looks, the, the character of them is very different right away. The overall colors in the yarn are relatively soft overall, but there are sharp speckles. There's no question about that. that there are really sharp speckles. I'm not sure which color has some pops of this yellow. We can see it in some of the roving. I mean, there it's more uh, green because of the blue wash, but this is something to always keep in mind whenever you are speckling with acid dyes. Uh, there can be some surprise colors that come out, and so it's worth playing and seeing where you end up. And something like these yellow spots are something that when, say, I list this, in my Etsy shop, I will show this in one of the photos as sort of like a disclosure, and I usually mention in the text that there's a few, a couple yellow speckles or something. I don't think it should be any surprise which one of these rovings is my favorite, and that would be the low immersion one. And so therefore, that's the one I'm gonna to send to Carolyn D., our fantastic sponsor, who made this video possible. But I will also say in the braid, the countertop one has a real glazed look. Like moving the fiber around, you can really tell that there's a shallow layer of color on here. And there is something really, really fun about that. I am definitely not done playing around with this technique. I plan to look at it again in the future. I'd love to do it with a superwash roving um, or Try this again on non-superwash roving, but use more concentrated dye. Rather than mixing it with the citric acid powder, go ahead and add just the straight dye powder as speckles versus trying to get a more saturated color like I have in the past. Which one of the three is your favorite? Which fiber would you most like to spin? Let me know in the comments. And while you're down there in the comments section, give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications if you haven't already. I release new videos every Tuesday and Friday morning, and you really don't want to miss a thing. I've also included links in the video description to how you can sponsor an episode as a fan, and you know, obviously the rest of my shop. It's possible that sponsorships might get sold out, um, especially with the holidays come up, but I will restock as videos get filmed and edited. Um, so if it is sold out, check back or DM me and I can let you know when it comes back. <laughs> but don't despair! In the meantime, there are still a few Chemnitz Hanukkah special uh, samplers left where you can unbox a mini skein every night while watching the videos and it's going to be so much fun and I cannot wait to share these colors with you that I have been creating. And my shop is also filled with hundreds of skeins of hand dyed yarn featured in these videos and you should really go and check it out. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so much for watching. Thank you again Carolyn D and I hope that you guys all have a really fantastic day. Bye everyone!